assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall, is a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he has gathered all his sheep, he goes before them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again. I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they could have life, indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. There are so many ways to live life to the fullest right now. Or as another version called it, living life abundantly. Being together, either physically or virtually, is really important for us in this moment. Who knows, maybe we can keep up some of these connection habits that we have exercised well beyond our time of isolation. The next scripture is an extended version of our theme scripture for the Easter series, the one that we're hearing every week. And it shows us the values that early Christians, some of whom had to gather in secret or in isolation, the value that they put on supporting one another abundantly. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles. All the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. Every day they met together in the temple and ate in their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. The Lord added daily to the community of those who were being saved. I want to live this life to the fullest. I want to live passionately, love faithfully, and I want to celebrate every moment from now until my life's finale. And this is why Jesus, why what he taught, why he matters so much to me. Because at the core of his whole reason for being was to help people live this life to the fullest. You heard it in the scripture reading this morning. I came so that they could have life. Indeed, so they could live life to the fullest. Life is so fragile. Our bodies are amazing and yet frail. And the God of Jesus wants us to live to the fullest, to support one another so that all people can have abundant life, homes, community, food, health, love, Safety. Faith in Jesus' way isn't really all that much about what happens to us, about about to us after we die, but it's about how we live. Death doesn't end life, but it does remind us that all we truly have is this moment, and it won't last. Our mortality can be a gift to remind us to celebrate each moment. And for whatever reasons, I have been feeling a little robbed as of late. Jesus warned about thieves. He warned about anyone or anything that robs us of abundant life, of homes, community, food, health, love, safety. We've been enduring weeks of distancing 
as part of our sacred duty to slow the virus. People have lost their livelihood, homes, our sense of safety and freedom. People have died. It can feel like we've been robbed. I see the signs outside for all the high school seniors. No prom, no parties. I see weddings canceled. I PC and I hear about people who are sick and they, they can't be visited by those who love them. I see babies born who can't meet their grandparents. I see the people in my church community who have died and I couldn't anoint and bless them. That hurts. It all hurts. It feels like being robbed of those moments and I don't like it. In the days after Easter, Jesus' followers were breaking bread in their homes. Jesus had died. Death robbed them of the love that they had known. But they were also digesting a new reality. No, things were not going to go back to the way that they were before. That moment had passed. But love had been resurrected. The thief had been thwarted. What Jesus had promised was alive. They would go on to live and to see even greater things happen. And they would come to see the nature of sacrifice in a new way as they became an Easter people. And it didn't happen all at once by any means. But people began to see that passion, that love, the feeling of celebration that they had experienced when Jesus was alive. They hadn't been robbed. The nature of Christian sacrifice isn't to lose, to be robbed. The nature of sacrifice is to share. To have the good will of all people at heart. It's to let a glad and generous spirit rule your life. Our sacrifice isn't to rob ourselves or anyone, but to let grace overflow so that everyone can have the abundant life. Everyone can have homes and community food, health, love, and safety. Those things that God wants for everyone. This, this is what our spiritual ancestors discovered about having goodwill for all people. They remembered they remember Jesus' words about listening to the shepherd, adopting the same mind that was in him and not the things that rob us. You and I, we get to choose how we view the sacrifice that is called for in our time. Do we listen to the thieves who claim that it is robbing us? Or do we listen to the voice of the Spirit of the shepherd who calls us to be glad and generous in what we choose to do out of love for our neighbors, for the goodwill of all people. Because you and I, we get to choose. Jesus' way, his understanding of sacrifice is to live this life to the fullest to support one another in our sacrifice so that all people can have that abundant life, can have homes, can have a community, can have food, can have health, 
love and safety. And for this moment, that means enduring things that we don't like, things that hurt, not forever, but out of love of neighbor, enduring them so that all people may be able to live this life to the fullest. As we are in our homes now, just as our spiritual ancestors once were, we have broken bread. We hold the goodwill of not just ourselves, but of all people in our hearts. And we are building a temple, not a building, but a temple in our hearts that connects us. So as we've been doing this Easter season, I invite you to break open, to share your hearts with one another, either online in our Facebook or YouTube, YouTube comments, or maybe with the people who are around you. Share your experience, speak your truth. Take a moment to share. Who or what are the thieves threatening to rob you of a sense of calm and trust and hope in this time? And now, what have you found to be the voice of the shepherd that gives you a sense of well-being, hope, and abundance? Take a minute to discuss that with the people who are around you. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faith. Should wander the valley. 
kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O 